And first you have to hack your way through a hack writer's jungle of crazed scientists, evil businessmen and nefarious conspiracies. The story begins a bit after the last Jurassic World left off. The nature park and its creatures have been abandoned. Unfortunately an inactive volcano on the island has suddenly gone active, and threatens to make these animals extinct all over again. Of course they can. And before you can sing we're off to see the lizards their knee deep in ooze, rounding up raging velociraptors. It's once they get the giants back to California that things really get complicated. The special effects remain startling, and in your face. But there's nothing new here, and what's old feels like less. The corporate villains seem to have wandered over from Rampage. The humor has vanished. The last half of the movie takes place indoors, where everything's cramped and dark. Director J.A. Bayona, who did the spooky Spanish flick The Orphanage, gets in some lovely shots. There's one of Alone, deserted dinosaur that's actually heartrending. In another, the reflection of a snarling monster mirrors that of a screaming child. But mostly he's just moving things along, getting us out of one scene and into the next, avoiding distractions like quit or character. That's not directing. That's directing traffic. Howard looks terrific, Bayona gives her dozens of carefully lit close-ups, and at least, unlike the last movie, she's no longer running through the jungle in Melania stilettos. In a small joke, though, she's introduced with a close-up of her high heels. But her character is a little vague, she's got some kind of save the dinos group and her ongoing relationship with hunky animal behaviorist Chris Pratt has lost its charm. Pratt started his leading man career as an appealing, no-drama hero in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, but his half-baked Harrison Ford imitation is getting old. And adding two quirky millennial scientists to the cast, plus a supposedly adorable little girl, feels like desperate pandering to an audience that wasn't even born when the first film came out. Speaking of which, Jeff Goldblum shows up, too, reprising his role from the original flick as Dr. Malcolm. But he basically has only one scene which consists of him sitting at a table, doing that speed mumble thing of his and warning us we're all doomed. Nice work if you can get it. It's probably only here to set up his return in whatever sequel comes next, but that's the main problem with Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. The series started out 25 years ago as a Spielberg film, but now it feels like a Marvel movie. It's all exposition and backstory and too many characters, none of whom we care about. Also it can colonize one more planet in its universe. That's probably enough reason for this movie to exist, if you're a studio head. But if this is the best the Jurassic series can manage, it's the real endangered species. Mm -hmm.